It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, your new project currently requires 5 gigabits per second or Gbps of egress traffic from your Google Cloud environment to your company's private data center. But it might scale up to 80 Gbps of traffic in the future. You do not have any public addresses to use. Your company is looking for the most cost-effective long-term solution. Which type of connection should you use? So the key parts of the question, there is the Google Cloud environment and there is your company's private data center. It's currently about 5 Gbps of egress traffic, but it might rise to 80 Gbps and you do not have public addresses to use. So when we design the solution, we need to have a hybrid connectivity solution that will connect separate networks. So this is not going to be just within your VPC, but it is going to have to connect two separate autonomous networks. It is going to require a very high bandwidth. 80 Gbps is fairly large. We also do not have any public addresses to use, so we can't have external IPs, which means that we will need to share a private IP address space defined by RFC 1980. We also have the luxury of designing a solution that is probably costly now with a higher capex or more capital expenditure as long as it pays off well over time, assuming all our requirements are met. So we are not necessarily looking for a temporary solution. We want something that we are okay investing a certain amount or large amount of money in provided we can amortize that cost over a long period of time. So given these, let us look at what would be the suitable solution for this requirement. Among the hybrid connectivity options that we have on Google Cloud today, there is carrier peering, direct peering, dedicated interconnect, partner interconnect, and cloud VPN. All of these are different properties. And it is now for us to identify which one of these is going to be the most, most suitable for our requirement. Let us compare each of them based on the few key requirements we have in this question. Of course, there is a lot more that differentiates this uh, or these options and you will have to consider them for a larger requirement, but we'll just focus on this particular requirement for now. The first one we look at is the address space. You can either you have a private address space or a public address space. With RFC 1918, a certain set of IP addresses were allocated that is going to be used only in a private setup. So these will never be allocated to a public machine that is going to be externally accessed. So typically within a VPC, when you're allocated VMs or when you're allocated subnetworks, you're going to be given these private addresses. If this machine has to face the external internet and machines have to, or say somebody outside your VPC has to access it, it needs to be given a public IP address. So the private address space uses only those that are defined by RFC 1918. In our requirement, we need these addresses that are on Google Cloud and in your on-prem to share the same private IP address space defined by RFC 1918 because there is no public IP address to allocate. So in the available options, carrier peering and direct peering requires a public IP, whereas dedicated interconnect, partner interconnect and cloud VPN can work with a private IP. Therefore, these are the suitable options when it comes to the addressing requirement. Now let's look at connectivity. 
This is not a core requirement that has come up in the question itself. However, given the options, we will see that something that connects directly to Google as opposed to going, say, via the public internet or via an intermediate service provider will probably give you higher bandwidth and um, higher SLEs. Of the available options, direct peering and dedicated interconnect will directly connect to a data center within uh, Google, right? Or a point of presence that is managed by Google. So if you have the capability to be co-located within some of these points of presence, then you can opt for direct peering or dedicated interconnect. Carrier peering or partner interconnect goes through an intermediate service provider, which might be, say, your telecom provider. Cloud VPN goes over the public internet. However, of course, the data can be encrypted, so it's not like it's open to the public internet, but it traverses the public internet in an encrypted form. So of the lot, to get, say, higher bandwidth, we would ideally be choosing something that is a direct connection. So of these uh, available options, direct peering and dedicated interconnect are the most suitable. The third requirement that we had was bandwidth, right? We needed a fairly high bandwidth. Of the available options, the one that gives the kind of bandwidth we require is the dedicated interconnect. Dedicated interconnect has 10 to 100 Gbps. Now you could potentially get that with direct peering, but per connection you're going to get only 10 Gbps. So there's a little more work to do to get to that kind of uh, bandwidth that we require. The others are going to be dependent on the public internet or the intermediate uh, service provider. And usually they have much lesser um, bandwidth that is available to you. Therefore, in this comparison, the one that suits us the most is the dedicated interconnect. Putting all of them together, the one that suits us the best for the requirements that we have to have a pri private IP address space, to have up to 80 Gbps of uh, egress bandwidth, the right option in this case would be dedicated interconnect. The last part of the requirement was that we needed a cost-effective solution, but a cost-effective long-term solution. Among the available options, the most cost-effective is actually Cloud VPN. It's easy to set up. There is um, no extra work to be done except choosing something in your console or running a few commands, which is not the case for the others. However, we are not necessarily looking for a temporary solution. We are okay to invest in a long-term solution. So even though it's cost-effective, it does not suit the other requirements, especially of bandwidth. Cloud VPN has one of the lowest available bandwidths. Of course, it depends on what the service provider provides to, but the available bandwidth typically for Cloud VPN is in a few GBs. Oh, sorry, in a few uh, gigabytes per second. So given all of that, the right solution for our requirement is going to be option C, which is the dedicated interconnect to connect these two networks in a hybrid setup with using hybrid connectivity. Now it's time to subscribe to all the great content we've got lined up for you to learn Google Cloud and to help you with the certifications. Mm -hmm.